Okay, here we try to prove this inequality. Uh, it is very common in uh, pretty much uh, textbook and, uh, and other uh, classes. But let's try to prove this with uh, a few different methods. All right, what it says is for real number A, B, C, we're going to prove this inequality. You know, this is like a, the mutual pairwise product. The sum of pairwise product is less than the, the square, right? The sum of squares with the equality holds when one number equal to each other, all right? So why don't you think about it? Uh, have you seen this problem before? Do you know how to prove it? And try to prove it and uh, come back to the video. All right, let's continue. Um, there are a few methods, but here I'm going to introduce the unusual method. Okay, so I, I haven't really seen any method like this, uh, you know, on the internet at least. Okay, so first of all, I would like to uh, claim that uh, uh, for the inequality we want to prove for the real numbers. I claim that it is okay to only consider the positive numbers because if one of them are elective and then you're gonna have a elective term here and if you change if you flip the sign you can make a stronger statement right yeah so or if everyone is elective your pairwise multiply elective elective is positive so it's equivalent to everyone is positive, right? If two of them are elective, like A, B, elective, then A times B is positive, and B, C, C, A would be elective, but if you turn around, then you can prove a stronger statement if ev everyone is positive, all right? So, since this equation is symmetrical in A, B, C, so without loss of generosity, we can say you can just assume C is the biggest. Since C is the biggest, you can also assume C is greater than zero because if C equals zero, everyone must be zero, and zero, of course, is holds, or the equality holds, right? But so we can assume C is greater than zero. All right. So once we convince that uh, this is the case, all right, let's try to prove with what is called unusual method. All right. So here, what do I want to do is I want to show this s is greater or equal to zero. You know, but since c is greater than zero, it's equivalent to show that s over you know, c squared is also greater or equal to zero. So we want to prove this. So what is this? This is nothing but uh, you know, uh, some square plus one minus some product minus this, right? Nothing special about it. But in, for the better notation, let's call this x, a over c equal x, and b over c also y. We know that this must be between 0 and 1, right? Because we assume c is the largest. All right, so once you have this variable x and y, this becomes x squared plus y squared plus y minus this would be x times y minus x minus y. All right, so let's rewrite it. All right, so that's that's it. This expression. So we know that uh, x and y is smaller than one, right? And greater than zero. Now what we do is you're gonna try to complete the square here negative 2y, negative xy, maybe what you do is you try to get x minus y square. This will give you negative 2xy. So you need to compensate it by plus xy, right? Plus 1 minus x minus y, right? So because this negative 2y is equivalent to negative 2xy plus xy, right? You split this 
in the two terms, and then you combine these, it's going to get x minus y squared. All right? So what is the latter part? This is nothing but x minus 1 times y minus 1, x minus y squared. We know that this is greater or equal to 0. Here, since this is a elective number, right, this is smaller than 0, this is smaller than 0, they're smaller than 1. But then negative, negative, the whole thing is, is positive. So the whole thing is positive. So we're done. So we proved through this, you know, special algebra equation here that the original statement, right, which is this one, right? So I call it unusual method, all right? So, and of course, the other two methods probably you have seen that before, but uh, there's a typical method. That's why I say the first method is unusual method. So it's based on the fact that, the second method is based on the fact that if you square, some real number is going to be greater or equal to zero, right? So look at this special equation here, right? If you, if you expand it out, what you're going to get is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, right? The second term is b squared minus 2bc plus c squared. And then you plus c squared minus 2ca and then plus a squared, greater or equal to zero. Now, you will combine the terms here, right? Everything here is like a 2. So you're going to have 2 a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And then in the elective term here is this is exactly 2 the ab plus bc plus ca greater or equal to 0. And then, of course, 2 cancels. And then move this term around. You, you get exactly what we try to prove, right? This is a straightforward, it's clean, and, and, and this is the most commonly used method to prove the inequality, right? The third method, you know, here we try to evaluate this. We want to show that this is greater or equal to zero, right? But we try to compute the square by using quadratic in A, right? So there's A here, this is here. You combine this, this is A times B plus C. And then this is considered a constant. Now, how do you complete the square? You're going to have a minus 2 and b plus c over 2, right? Square, right? So this, this is the term, the middle term. And then you're going to minus 4b plus c square, right? To compensate these two terms here. And then you add the remaining one. Okay, so if you expand this, right? So for example, if you get this four here, right? This would be four, this would be four, this would be four, right? So what you get is a minus c square. Here you have, if you expand it out, right? And then what you get is plus 4, this would be, uh, when you combine this and, and the other one, this would be 3b squared plus 3c squared, right? And minus, four b c and this is minus here, minus 2bc, so minus 6bc, right? So this is exactly what you get is a minus b plus c over 2 square plus this is a perfect square, 4, this is a 3, and then b minus c square. This is greater than 0. We're done. All right, this is the third method. All right, so hopefully you follow these uh, three different methods, right, the unusual one, the kind of a... Uh, you know, the typical one and the uh, less uh, openly used, uh, you know, complete the square one. All right. So hopefully you enjoy the video. And here is the exercise from the previous uh, lesson where 
you know, we are given four numbers. We have this. We try to pr prove this inequality. All right. So try to uh, do it yourself. And I'm going to have a video to solve this problem in a few days. All right. Thank you.